Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss regression analysis. Specifically, we will focus on simple regression, although toward the end we will explain briefly what multiple regression is. So what is a regression analysis? The primary goal of a regression analysis is to predict or estimate the value of one variable, which we call the dependent or the response variable, based on a value of another variable, independent or explanatory variable. Why do we need to learn about regression for business, for the CMA exam, for the CPA exam? What is the purpose of this? Why do we learn regression when it comes to business context? Well, it's important. Why? Because you want to estimate your cost. You want to estimate your sales. And that's one way to look to see what influence, what's affecting your sales, what's affecting your cost. And that's how it's used. Now it's used, a, it provides a mathematical model that describes this relationship. It's, there's a formula. We're going to look at the formula, but we don't have to go into the math. We just have to understand the formula itself. What does it tell us? Now in the prior session, we looked at correlation. It measures the strength and direction of a relationship without predicting or explaining how one variable influenced the other. So in the prior session, we looked at correlations. We want to make sure you don't confuse correlation with regression. Just in case you're wondering, go to the prior session to basically look at correlation. But in this session, we'll focus on regression, specifically simple regression. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn, understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures. We offer practice MCQs. We offer true false questions. We offer exercises. We offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass, and you can pass with Farhat Lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two-day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance. We can help you pass the CMA exam. Simple regression also known as a simple linear regression, is a st st statistical method used to model the relationship between two variables. It's called simple because you are using one independent variable and one dependent variable. For example, one independent variable, we're going to assume it's a study hours, which it's a predictor or explanatory variable, and the dependent variable is your grade. So we are going to study the relationship between how many hours you study, how can we predict that by to use to predict your grade? How can we use your study hours to predict your grade? The correlation, what we find out in the correlation is there is a correlation. The more study you do, the higher is your grade. The more study hours you put, the higher is your grade. That's the correlation. Now we're going to try to find out as you put more hours, as you put an additional hour, an additional two hours, what will be the grade estimating or predicting your grade? So the goal is to find a linear relationship between th these two variables, which can be represented by the equation of a straight line. And hopefully we know this. Y equal A plus BX. Maybe you learn it in your algebra course. Y equal MX plus B. It's the same equation, just in case you see it in your textbook differently. Or when you learn algebra, they, that's how they show it, y equal mx plus b. It's the same thing. Now, let's explain the various components of this formula. Starting with y. y is the dependent variable. In our illustration, y will be your grade. So we're trying to predict your grade. So this is the dependent variable is your grade. A 
is the y-intercept. What's the y-intercept? Well, if we're looking at a graph, this is x and this is y. And this is y, the y-line, y. A is the intercept, is the y-intercept. We have a line. We're going to have a line because this is the equation of a straight line. And this line will hit the y-axis. Let me draw it in a different color. So this line will intercept the y-axis at some point. This is A. Notice where the, where the line intercept the y-axis, x is at 0 because this is, this is 0 for y and 0 for x. So A is the y-intercept. In the terminology of cost accounting, if you remember, A is the fixed cost. It means regardless of how many units you produce, how many axes you produce, even if you, if you produce zero unit, you still have a fixed cost, for example, of $10,000. We call it the y-intercept or the fixed cost. So the y-intercept is where the line where x equal to zero. Simply put, you have nothing to, pr you're not producing anything, you still have to pay that. So it's the fixed cost. It's called the y-intercept. So A is the y-intercept. B is the slope of the regression line. A, so A is the y-intercept. B is the slope of the line, rise over run, the slope of the line. And this is what we need to compute. And X is the independent variable. Here, the independent variable is the study hours. So we need to find the slope. We need to find the slope of the line and the, uh, the y-intercept, which is A. Now, to do so, what we do is we take a bunch of data, like this one. We have the study hours, and we have a final grade. And we can first, if you want to, you can run this through a regression, or you can do a scatter graph. I'm just going to show you how, how you will do this, but an Excel output of a linear will give you something like this. So, for example, here for two study hours, so here are the study hours, the x-axis, the index, the independent variable for two study hours, your grade is 61.99, almost 62, someplace here. Another person studied two hours and their grade was 57.75. Another student studied three hours and their grade was around 64, 64.5, this point here. Another student studied three hours, 64.9. Another student studied four hours and their grade was 74. Another student studied four hours and their grade was 71. So what you do is you is you is you figure out the where they intercept the study hours and the final grade. And what you do is you draw a line. This is the line, the regression line in the middle. Try to draw it right in the middle. Again, you don't do this usually. A uh, this is the line. This is the regression line. This is the regression line. Now, you run this regression and you come up with an output. And the output formula for, for this data, what we're trying to do is to predict the final grade. It says the A, remember the A is the y-intercept. This is the A. The y-intercept, if we keep this drawing this line, the y-intercept is 50.46. So what does A mean? It means if a student did not study any hours, so zero hours. For zero hours, if students just walk into the exam without studying, they will earn 50.46 as their grade. Now, when we computed the slope of the line, again, it will be the output will be given to you. This is the slope of the line, 4.95, almost 5, let's say 5 points to make it easier. This is B. And what is B? Let's go back and just show you what B is so you you know what we're talking about, the slope of the regression line, B, the regression coefficient, B. B is five points times, then we'll take this times, the study hours. This is the regression equation. For After we run the regression, this is what we come up with. So this is the final grade as Y. Now we could predict the final grade for any amount of time based on this equation. So first, the scattered plot visually shows the relationship between the study hours and the final grade. And before you run the regression, first you want to see if there's any correlation. 
and there is a correlation the more the more hours you study the higher is your grade so there's a positive relationship you would go go ahead and you would run the regression with the red line let's go back to the red line with the red line representing the predicted grades based on the regression model so if you study seven hours it's approximately your grade should be approximately 84 okay if it's on it should if it falls on the line eight hours this much now we can predict what nine hours looks like now so this means for each additional hour of study the final grade increased by approximately let's say 5.4.95 the intercept of 50.46 represent the expected final grade if no hours were studied now what we can do we can take this formula and if you want if you want to predict the final grade for nine hours we would say 50.46 plus 4.95 times 9 hours and we can predict the final grade and this is how we use it in the business world oh this is how companies would use it is they want to predict sales based on some variable they want to predict total cost based on some activity so this is what the regression equation would help now this is the reg regression regression equation and we explain each component of it we also something have called R square or capital R square now don't confuse capital R with lowercase r that we saw in the prior session for the correlation R square it's called the coefficient of determination ranges from 0 to 1 which is the correlation ranges from negative 1 to 1 so don't confuse those two we're talking about R square R squared measures the fit of the line, the fit of this line. How fit is this line? How fit? It means how close these points are to the line. The closer to the line, the fitter is the line. Now they're not very. They're, they're not going to be on the line. I mean, if they're on the line. It means it's a perfect fitness, but they're close enough that it's there's a perfect fit here. But we can measure how fit that is. Now R square ranges from 0 0.0 to one. If R square is zero, it means that the regression line does not explain any of the variability in the independent variable. If we computed R square, and usually R square will be given to you, maybe you are giving R square of, as an output, and you would say R square is that much, how do you interpret this? If R square is zero, it means the regression line does not explain any variability. It means it's, the model is not useful. It doesn't explain anything. If the R square is one, which is on the other extreme, means the regression line perfectly explain all the variability in the in the, in, in the dependent variable. Basically, the scores are you know they they all fit on this line. They all fit on this line, which is perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we need to have something you know high, closer to one, closer to one. So the model will perfectly fit the data if it's one. Now, when we run this R square for this for this model we find out that r square is 0 0.92 0 0.92 is very close to one so how do we explain that r square is 0 0.92 so 92 92 percent of the variation in the final grades can be explained by the number of study hours we can see that 90 percent of the variation in the final grade is related to the amount of time the students study what does that mean? It means that we have a strong prediction. This means that the study hours are a strong prediction because this is closer to 1.92 is closer to 1 with only 8% of the variation being due to other factors not included in the model. S study habit, exam difficulty, the person was sick, something else. The person was having a bad day. There's, there are other factors that influence your grade. But 90% of the variability of the grade has to do with your study hours. So this is a strong fit. So the closer the R square is closer to 1, the more fit is the model, the more useful of the model of predicting the results. Now don't confuse this with the correlation which goes from negative 1 to 1. Okay, don't confuse those two. R squared goes, it's either zero, no, no relationship, or one, which is perfect fit. Make sure you know the difference between those two. 
some assumptions of the linear regression model, which you, you might see some multiple choice questions about. So, so what do you need to know for the CMA or CPA exam? You need to know how to read a regression. You know, you need to know this formula. You need to know what R square is. But in addition to that, you need to know something about regression. When we run a regression or linear regression model, we make certain assumptions. What is what are these assumptions? The linear relationship between X and Y valid only within something we called the relevant range. What is a relevant range? It's assumed to be linear, like the, that relationship hold if it's linear, like for example, grades and grades, grades, study hours and grades, it holds up to a point within a relevant range. This relevant range is the period or scope or the cost behavior, let's move to cost, because at some point, for example, we, we're trying to predict the total cost of something and we can run this model, but at some point, if cost kept on increasing, it's outside our production level, then the assumptions don't work. This assumption does not work. So we always assume that our cost, as long as our cost is between 5 million and 10 million, this formula would hold true. This is the assumption, the relationship between X and Y hold true. Anything outside that range, it does not hold. And sometimes if we get a negative Y intercept, it tells us that we are working outside the relevant range. So what is a relevant range? For example, a company might experience constant cost per unit, okay, when producing 100 to 500 unit. So we have that constant cost that y equal a plus bx. So b is constant, is constant as long as we are producing 100 to 500 unit. If we are producing more than 500 unit and we want to predict our total cost, then b is b is would increase. Therefore, the equation that we were relying on, we cannot rely on anymore. If we, if you go beyond this range, the linear relationship might, might no longer hold because the cost may change and the condition that established the relationship may no longer apply. What do you need to know from all of this is the relationship between X and Y is valid within a relevant range. And of course, you cannot take a formula and say it always holds the same. What if we're producing too much or too little? Things will change. So for instance, at a higher production level, variable cost may increase due to inefficiencies or they may decrease to efficiencies. It, it just what I'm trying to say, it, it could change or fixed cost may change due to capacity adjustment. Remember, we assume that Y equal A plus BX. I always say MX, BX. So as you produce more, you, want, you, you, you might have to change your A, your fixed cost will have to change. You have to expand your warehouse. Well, if you have to expand your warehouse, you have to rent more. If you have to rent more, A will change, making the linear regression model no longer valid. Now, what are the benefits and limitation of regression analysis? Obviously, there's a lot of benefits. It's valuable for budgeting and cost assumption purposes. It can help the organization understand and predict cost behavior. And you, you should have learned about this in your cost and managerial accounting. And that's why this topic is covered in on the CMA exam heavily, as well as the CPA for that matter, by determining how different factors, production volume, labors, and other factors affect cost. This is especially useful in cost accounting to budget accurately and control cost effectively. Key tools for analyzing mixed cost and flexible budgeting. Now, what's going to happen in the real world? You are going to be giving the cost, the total cost. What you have to do is you have to break down the mixed cost into the mixed cost into a variable cost and a fixed cost. The regression will does exactly that. That's another useful useful use of it. Regression is essential for separating mixed cost, which include both fixed and variable component. The y-intercept again represent the fixed cost. It's the a or the y-intercept. The slope of the line represent the variable cost or unit per activity. So if the regression equation of the cost is something like this, total cost equal to 5,000 plus $20 times unit produce, it means we have a 5,000 fixed cost and 20,000 is the variable cost, which is the B, the B, the variable cost. There's few limitations. Let's talk about the limitation. The limitation here is when we're using this model, we assume that past relationship can be projected into the future. That's not, that doesn't have to be true, but 
that's what regression assumes that historical relationship between variable uh, bet between variable will continue between the variables will continue in the future this can be a limitation if the underlying condition change and the underlying condition always change so the company will have to make adjustments for example of market condition technology or cost structure the past data used in regression may not accurately predict our future cost or behavior so as long as everything stays the same and within within the relevant range we should be good to go it cannot be used when cost pattern change same thing when any changes well it cannot it cannot be used of cost behavior changes from the prior period due to factors like shift and production method or pricing strategy what's production method let's assume in the past you were relying more on labor which is a variable cost now you install the new machine you 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 replace your labor with your with a machinery well there's a shift in the production method then well you have to change your model or pricing strategies if you are looking at sales it may lo no longer be useful and regression also does not determine causality they can show regression can show that two variables move together they're correlated you can you can measure it it tells you how much it explains but it cannot prove that one variable causes the other it could be other unseen variable influence in the relationship now the higher the r square is the more confident we are but we can we, there's always some other factor that we cannot measure now what we did so far we talked about simple regression well we can talk about multiple regression multiple regression is an extension of the simple regression all what we're doing is in a multiple regression is to have still have one dependent variable but rather than using one one independent variable we could have more than one independent variable it's used when multiple factors are believed to influence the outcome and that's always the case in the real world you cannot say one thing only one thing result in one one like one one activity result in you know in sales or in uh, result to your cost uh, influence your cost there are many factors so what you have to do is you have to run multiple regression to quantify and I'm going to show you a different equation that's basically the same again why the total cost or the dependent the dependent variable equal to b0 this is y plus b1 is the regression times x1 then we'll have b2 times x2 we have plus x3 plus x4 plus at the end we have an error which is a factor that we don't know anything about so to look at this equation it's the same thing why is the dependent variable the variable you are trying to predict your grade uh, for example this was your grade x1 x2 x3 are the independent variable your predictor when we looked at the simple regression we only used at one x and it was the grade again you could use the grade you could use um, for example uh, what time the exam is taking uh, you could use uh, is it spring versus fall that could be a factor in your grade. it could be many things so you have to predict what are the factors uh, b1 b2 so on and so forth are the coefficient of the independent variable they show the effect of each predictable and e as i told you is the error term at the end we always have to say there's something else that we're not aware of so an example of a multiple regression just to kind of give you a feeling suppose you're trying to predict housing prices based on several factors like square footage x1 the number of bedroom x2 and the distance from the city is x3 we could have an equation that looks something like this the price of the house the base is fifty thousand if there's nothing involved then you'll take one hundred and fifty thousand fifty dollars times the square footage that's going to add to the price of the house plus ten thousand dollar times the bedroom how many bedroom if it has three bedroom this is going to be thirty thousand if it has two bedroom it's twenty thousand the more bedroom the higher is the price minus notice here minus five hundred dollar times the distance from the city so if it's 20 miles away from the city that's gonna that's gonna reduce the price here the distance is working against you it could work with you like could be a plus so but this is basically a multiple regression you could have many but again at the end you put okay plus the unknown plus the unknown which is there's other factors that you cannot explain so the square footage increased the price by 150 the bedroom increased the price by 1000 and the distance reduced the price by 500 you know for every additional mile you're away from the city 
Benefits of multiple regression, obviously, I hope you could see the benefit. It allows to do what? To include more, more variables that could affect the outcome. And that's always true in the real world. It could give you a better prediction. Not one thing affect, you know, give you the, the the results that you're looking for. There are many factors that could influence the price of something, the total cost, so on and so forth. Also, another benefit is you can determine the individual impact of each independent variable on the dependent variable while controlling for others. So you could remove one out and see what's the effect. Limitation, there are limitation, multi collinearity if the independent variable are highly correlated with each other then you don't know which is which it can distort the coefficient and reduce the mo models reliability if you have too many and they all they all work the same way overfitting too is a limitation in a multiple regression because if you add too many predictor it can it can make the model fit the specific data set too well making it less generalizable to other data it's called overfitting let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com a company uses a multiple regression to predict sales prices based on advertising expenses and market size. So that's what they're using a multiple regression. Why? Because they're using more than one variable to more than one independent variable to predict the dependent variable, which is sales. And the equation that they have for this company is $1,000. So simply put, sales will equal to $1,000 if we don't advertise, we don't do anything else. But it's going to be four times the advertisement plus three times the market size. It looks like the more we advertise, the bigger is the market size, the more sales we should have. The question reads, what's the expected change in sales if advertising expense increased by 10 unit and the market size remained the same? What does that mean? It means if advertising expense is 10, increase, increase by 10, if it increased by 10, you take 4 times 10, 4 times 10 equal to 40, and that's going to increase sales by four, $40, $40. Well, the answer will be B, because we're keeping market sizes the same. You could, for example, increase market size, you know, so on and so forth, whatever you have, but this is how it works. So the changes in the independent variable would influence the dependent variable which is sales. What should you do now? If you're studying for your CMA exam, CPA exam, accounting courses, finance courses, professional certification, go to Farhat Lectures and work additional MCQs. That's what you should do. Because you need to learn this. The more questions you practice, the more comfortable you get. And Farhat is always here to help. Invest in yourself.